Okay. Relax. Welcome to the Ask Dr. Renee show. I am your host, Dr. Renee. The show is here to motivate and inspire you to live the life that you deserve. I am bringing this show to you to give you stories of people who were just like you and now they have went on to live the life that they deserve. I believe all of us should be happy. Life is too short and this is not a dress rehearsal. Why are you, why are you waiting to start living? Live life now. Our guest today is Sonia Jackson Miles, dream walker, marketing executive, wife, mother, daughter, mentor, and sister to many. She inspires and motivates me because she has a beautiful family and a fulfilling career, making a difference in many lives across the world, which is what I aspire to do. So welcome to the show, Sonia. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so honored to be here with you. Thank you. There's a lot that inspires me about your life, so let's get started. Oh so boy. you are originally from Michigan. <laughs> I'm nervous. From Michigan, right? no, I am from nervous. Saginaw. Saginaw's in the house. Yay! <laughs> uh, so I, of course, am a Michigander as well. So that's yes. one, you know, wonderful thing we have in common. Besides the fact we're both Virgos, and I know there's several Virgos watching yes. tonight as well. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. So and we are amazing people. Yes, we are. And did you know that we are um, the top billionaires are all Virgos? No, I didn't. Yes, Warren Buffett's a Virgo. A lot, several millionaires and billionaires. Most oh Virgos. Oh my goodness! Well, we're just gonna have to join those uh, ranks then. Exactly. <laughs> that is my goal. <laughs> so you recently said on social media you met your husband at 17 years old. Yes, I saw that man from across the room and said, he's mine. Now, where were you? you got to tell us the story. <laughs> well, I was at a house party, and as he would say, I was somewhere where I had no business being because, you know, it was where, where all the grown folks were, and I was just a little kid. Um, and so it was one of those uh, house parties in the basement with the blue lights and red lights. Um, it was after my graduation, and uh, I, I don't know if he was DJing or if he was next to the D DJ's table, but I saw him from across the room and said to my best friend, my best friend and I have been friends since first grade, and I said, oh my gosh, that's Kenny Miles, you know, and he sort of, you know, had a reputation in, in, in Saginaw, and, you know, he was beautiful, and I said, boy, I'm going to marry that man. Who, where is he? Where, where is he now? You know? And so um, I kind of kept my eye on him that night, and um, we talked the next day uh, forward um, every single day until I went away to college at uh, Florida A&M University. Okay, so for us single people, this is why I needed to ask you this, because I am trying to find inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> that it will happen. But how did you, because I, you know, I have um, lots of friends and family that are doing the long distance thing. How did you do that? Because yes. I know he is a Spartan. So you see why I'm in love with this family. Exactly. So Michigan, Virgos, yeah. and Spartans. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so how, well, did you you, know, how did you do that? Family and Michigan State are not close. It was, it was, you know, long distance relationships are tough. It, it takes a lot of communication. It takes a lot of trust. Um, as he said, you know, um, I uh, lost my uh, mind one day and um, sent him a Dear John letter, um, or as, as he calls it, a Dear Kenny letter. Um, but we were together, most of our courtship was long distance. And what we would do is we would make plans to see each other on a regular basis. Um, we would talk. Our phone bills were excessive. I mean, like thousands I know, I of dollars. Imagine. I hate to tell you. But we, we would talk a lot. And, you know, I never dated anyone, you know, on FAMU's campus. Um, and so it was, you know, I had uh, boyfriends when, during the time that we had our hiatus. You know, I met other guys and realized that he was the one. You know how you, you, you're, you're, you're wondering. Um, I, it, it became very apparent to me and very clear to me that he was the one. And as he says, I came uh, begging on my hands and knees, crying. Um, and asking for him to take me back after my poor uh, lapse in judgment. Uh, <laughs> that's his story. That is not my story. But, um, you know, it, it, it really comes down to 
um, do you have something in common? You know, neither of us had anything. I was 17, he was young, just starting out. And so we were willing to build together. And that's really the, the beauty of our relationship. Um, lots of sacrifices. You know, he's given up his career twice for me uh, to take on new roles and to move to different cities. Um, I didn't ask him to do it. And in many instances, people will ask me what's my biggest regret. And I'll say, letting him do some of these things because, you know, it, it set his career back um, in some instances. But that's what marriage and relationships are all about. It's about the give and take. You know, are you willing to step back and let your mate step forward? And then at some given time in the future, um, you know, you all switch those roles. And so um, it's been a very good uh, relationship uh, for us because we've been able to, you know, one will back, you know, step back and the other will step forward and pushing each other and really supporting each other. And communication is really the key. And so that's what it's all about. And that's, I mean, that's what it comes, that's what it boils down to in any relationship, if it's, you know, long distance or not. Communication is very important. And it's tough, so, right? You know, so oh, I, I'm sure. people always say, you know, oh, it looks so perfect. Oh, no, there are no perfect uh, situations. What you do is you get on your knees and you ask God to help you through those valley moments. Um, but there will always be those, those challenges, but you can get through them together. So, and that's wonderful that he has supported your career so, and so that you can, you know, support his now even. But what, so when you graduated from FAMU, you immediately went and worked for Ford, or did you do like internships with them or something? Or? I said, look, I'm getting back to that man. Where is he? Is he in Michigan? I if knew it was going to be. That's where I'm going. <laughs> I was tired of that long distance relationship, but get this, it was still long distance because he had a career at Dow and I was in Detroit. So he was in Saginaw Midland? and I was in Saginaw. Detroit. It was still, exactly, but he worked out, uh, you know, uh, at Dow in, in Midland, but it was still long distance, and I said, enough of this. I can't take any more of this, and so he moved to, that was the first time he gave up his career. He left Dow and moved to uh, the Detroit area so that he could get a job in the automotive industry, which he absolutely loved, so it was great for him, um, but that was the first time that he made that sacrifice. We were still long distance prior to that. Wow, wow, and so, um, so you have two sons. Yes, my light and, and my love. Yeah. <laughs> so when did that? Now, when did you get married? When did you have? When did you have kids? How did that fit into your your career? Yeah, so he um, and I, you know, I'm very. I was very career oriented, right? You know, very much. VP by 40, I had my plans, I had everything laid out, and, you know, God smiles, right, when we're making our plans. Um, exactly. But uh, I decided, um, so we got married in 2003. No, 1993, what am I saying? We got married in 1993, and <laughs> 2003, okay. Um, and then uh, we, I had my first uh, son in 1996. So we waited a couple years. We wanted to just travel the world, uh, spend time with each other because we had been apart. So we had to get to know each other, uh, you know, living in the same city. Um, and then I had my second son 18 months uh, uh, later. They're 18 months apart. And then I shared recently uh, in social media as part of my According to Sonia um, series that, um, you know, I was pregnant again. I had almost had three children under three. Um, and I had a miscarriage, but uh, what I talked about, and Jordan and that baby were only going to be 14 months apart, so get that, oh, wow. three oh, wow. under three, and I had this amazing career, I was at Ford Motor Company, and people who knew me said I bled Ford Blue, because I was a company woman, I was, you know, on the path, and um, I uh, found out I was pregnant with that third baby and lost my, I'm like, Oh no, there is no way I can have three children under three and have the career that I want. And so I was so caught up in career that I totally lost focus of the blessing that God was really, uh, you know, giving me by being able to 
to have another child. And then when I had the miscarriage, you know, I had all this sadness and, and really, um, you know, very disappointed in myself because I did not, uh, you know, honor it. I did not feel good about it. So it was a tough and a very challenging moment for me. Real quickly, what was your major in college? What was your major in college? I uh, was uh, business administration uh, with a concentration in marketing. So I love the world of marketing. And then I decided to stay at Florida A&M University to get my MBA, also focused in marketing. Okay. So after you, so when did you leave Ford to go to P and G? So this is what's interesting. <clears throat> My story is just so amazing. Um, so I read this book called The Prayer of Jabez. Um, and, you know, it's this whole notion of enlarge my territory. And I had uh, no idea you were going to say that. but Oh, my gosh. That's my <laughs> book. That book was one of the books that changed my life. Okay. Okay, say what you said again, because um, I, I missed it. I just said okay, that's all. Go ahead and tell, tell the story. So I um, <clears throat> read this book and was deeply moved by it and knew that God was saying, you're in a very comfortable place. I absolutely loved my job. I loved the people that I was working with. I had the most amazing support system. My parents used to live around the corner from me. So I never had to worry about my children. I was able to go to the job and do exceedingly well, and they knew it. So they assumed that I would stay there for the remainder of my career. But I kept having this pulling, this tugging, and my husband kept saying, you know, there's more for you out there and pushing me. And I decided one day, I had never spoken to a recruiter, headhunter, whatever you want to call them, and one day, this lady called and I said, well, what is it? And fast forward, probably two months later, I had three job offers from three different companies. And I decided to take the job uh, at Gillette in Boston as the director of global indirect materials because I, I grew up in the purchasing arena, so I buy things, I bought things for a living. And I said, well, hmm, I like to shop. I like to buy things. So help me understand how that translates into value for a company. And when I learned about that on the campus of Florida A&M with this board representative, I was sold on, on that um, profession. And so <clears throat> in the purchasing world, to be a chief procurement officer, you really need to have both indirect and direct buying experience. And so I decided that it was time for me to get the indirect buying experience because I had the direct. And so I took this role with Gillette uh, in Boston um, as the global director for indirect materials. I bought everything that the company bought that didn't go into the product, into the razors. And my husband gave up his career for us to move there. He left his company and uh, we moved there on New Year's Day uh, 2004. Uh, and uh, it was one of the best decisions of my life. But that book, The Prayer of Jabez, started it off for me. And so a year after being there, and this is how, you know, you never know what's going to happen when you make these moves. Uh, but a year after we were there, uh, we got a call in the middle of the night saying, hey, did you know Procter & Gamble was going to buy us? And we're like, what? We can't move again. We just moved to Boston. And uh, we uh, really we looked at each other and said, well, one thing we know is we're not moving to Cincinnati. We have heard nothing positive about Cincinnati. They had the riots. <laughs> um, and so we made this pact that we would not move to Cincinnati. Um, but God had other plans. Uh, and so we ended up, uh, I ended up being part of the integration team and fell in love with the principal's of what um, Procter & Gamble um, espoused. And I said, wow, they line up with my personal principles. And um, 
I decided that I would take the job that they created for me versus going off and being a chief procurement officer somewhere because you got to remember that was my goal VP before 40 VP by by 40 and so I thought that this was God's way of saying here this is for you all these people were calling me to give me these roles and God said nope I've got another plan for you and it's in it's you going to Cincinnati and taking this role as the director of global media purchasing uh, for Gamber, the largest advertiser in the world. And I had the opportunity to design and launch their global media sourcing organization. Who gets that opportunity? Um, you know, right. uh, billions and billions of dollars. And that's how I ended up at Procter and Gamble. That is, and you just worked up, you know, the la walked up the ladder there, right? It's amazing, you know, and again, all of this is God. You know, he had orchestrated every single move, every single thing. There were people who had gotten, um, you know, when companies acquire other companies, they typically, you know, move people down a level. Yep. None of that happened for me. Um, you know, I just had one of the best experiences. People who were lifers with the company because you know I mean it's a promote from within culture would say we thought you grew up here so God gave me favor he he allowed me to establish trust very quickly with people because you gotta remember they had 20 years on me you know 15 20 years on me in terms of working together and I was able to come in establish this global media sourcing organization something that they have been trying to do for several years and unsuccessfully and God gave me favor so that I could come in and be successful and, and really uh, make a difference. That is wonderful. So you're a Procter and Gamble. You're doing it. Did you make it to? V I didn't pay attention. Did you make it to VP? No, I left. Okay. So in two thousand, <laughs> to two thousand and thirteen, you leave, and before you make your goal. So what made you leave? Well, you know, it's interesting. I had a couple of aha moments. I think when the government of Tanzania called and asked me to come and speak in the country and I had this amazing day job and I never wanted my company, my leaders, my team, no one to, to think that I was focused on my stuff or that I wasn't there for them or that I wasn't fully engaged. So I made sure that I kept all of my stuff very separate. and. Um, wanted to make sure that my team knew that I was for them and down with them 150 percent. And so I turned down this amazing opportunity to go to Tanzania to speak and I said, whoa, if they're calling me and talking to me about the impact that you know people who have been exposed to the sister accord and the impact it's having there, maybe I should, it's time for me to get some courage and stop being so scared and move forward with this thing and you know I would get calls I would get emails from people saying how it was transforming their lives and I said wow I can't do both you know this thing was growing and getting so large um, that I felt like I could not give Procter & Gamble everything that I needed to give them and, and do what I needed to do for the sister accord in order to maintain the momentum that we were experiencing. And um, I made a little bargain with God. You know Lisa Nichols? Yes. So Lisa Nichols uh, mentored me and coached me and said, look, Sonia, you can't leave until you have six months of expenses saved up. And I said, okay, I'll figure this out, you know. <laughs> and I... Um, bargained with God and had all these conversations with God. Oh Lord, if you just let me get six months, like Lisa said, I'm going to do this thing because I know this is what you created me to do. And I uh, was praying and meditating and the Holy Spirit said, check your stock options. And I'm like, check my stock options. I never check my stock options. Those things have just been sitting there forever. Oh Lord. So I, I go to the system to check it and my eyes like buck like you know <laughs> they were wide as saucers and I said oh my gosh I guess I'm gonna have to do what I've been you know kind of bargaining with God. <laughs> it's time. 
and I went and said uh, it's time to my husband and he said are you crazy why would you walk away from a job you absolutely love you're excelling at you know and things are going great for you and I said it's time and so I call it my you know fear to faith uh, journey and I decided that in November 2013 that um, it was time for me to make some courageous decisions and uh, you know, and if it, I found out that this was not the right thing to do, then I would, uh, you know, make adjustments. But it was time for me to launch. So we kind of skipped the part. So can you explain exactly what the Sister Accord is and when did you start it? So did the book come before the actual movement or? Well, uh, it started as I was asked to speak at an inaugural event for President Obama's first inauguration. Uh, Souls of My Sister event on Capitol Hill and uh, I wanted to do something really really special you know I had the opportunity to speak all over the country and world and you know just speaking just just didn't seem like it was enough so I again prayed about it because that's what I do for every aspect of my life and I saw this resolution in my dream it was called the Sister Pact uh, and I didn't like the word pack, so I changed it to accord eventually after searching, searching. Um, and uh, presented it on that day on Capitol Hill, and there was like a shift in the room. And Mickey Taylor, all these people who were there, Jackie Reed from Time Joyner Show, called me afterwards and said, Hey, my mom, the only thing she remembers is your resolution. Can she have a copy of it? People were coming up to me afterwards saying, What are you going to do with this? It was so amazing and beautiful, and I'm like, men were saying, you know, it was great. You know, what are you gonna do? And I kept saying, nothing. I've got this amazing career over here. Um, so it wasn't until <clears throat> friends, and that's why I say, you know, my sisters are so important to me. But my friends, my fam, you family, all these folks, you know, kept saying, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. But I was so afraid because I was in such a comfortable place um, you know in, in my position in corporate America and scared to let that go because I felt like I had um, you know achieved this you know worked hard achieved this level not very many uh, women young women African American women had um, you know that kind of um, opportunity and I felt like I owed it to you know my mentees and, and fellow colleagues, you know, to hang in there and focus. And so I just never, ever thought that this would be anything that I would do. But it wasn't until, you know, a group of uh, fam and said, hey, we're, we're going to help you get this book out. You, you got a book in you. And so the Sister Accord Resolution came first, was so powerful for people. Um, and then the uh, Sister Accord 51 Ways to Love Your Sister book. Uh, launched in 2000, there it is, there it is, uh, in 2013 and was nominated for an NAACP Image Award uh, that year. Um, so we were really, really excited um, that so many people have been touched by, by the movement and it's all about love, respect and support, getting women to understand that we go farther faster together. Mean girls grow up to be mean women if there's no intervention. The sister accord is the intervention. So where where is the sister like I mean I know you've made already tons of strides, but where else is the sister accord going? And can you share with everyone the um all the amazing things that you have done besides the wonderful book? Can you repeat you you broke up. Can you repeat your question? So you, you've already made major strides with the Sister Accord, so yeah. can you share with everyone all the strides you've already made and where are you guys going in the future? Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, I, I could never have even imagined some of the amazing things that we've been able to accomplish. Um, the, uh, I told you about the nomination. Uh, for the NAACP and majority, you know, this is my first book. It's self-published, um, but to get into Barnes and Noble and to have bookstores saying we have people who've been looking for what you have, the, it, it was like the world was waiting on the Sister Accord um, to come to life. 
and that's what I always tell people that our dreams are inextricably linked to each other and there are people unyet born or just born who are depending on us to bring our dreams to life it's a part of our destiny and so um, to have these bookstores and you know it usually takes years to do some of this stuff so I put this life integration plan together and I, I don't like to call it a marketing plan I call it life integration because I really want people to live the principles of the sister accord and um, it, it's just been amazing to see we launched our sister accord leadership enrichment tea party tour we visited seven cities um, Cincinnati declared <clears throat> they they declared Sister Accord Day on August 31st in the city of Cincinnati. Um, so we had that declaration. That we received the highest award that they give living persons in the state of Ohio as a result of the work that we're doing. And the seven cities, you know, we went to Cincinnati and then we went to Detroit. You know, we had to go to Michigan. Uh, then we went to Birmingham, Alabama. We went to Atlanta. Dallas, Jacksonville, Florida, uh, and uh, Seattle, Washington was our last one. And then we'll do seven this year, Chicago, Los Angeles, Louisville, Miami, Nashville, New York City, and D.C. And we're continuing to get calls from people around the world who want us to bring the Tea Party Tour um, to their country. Um, and, and again, who knew, right? <laughs> who right. knew that we would transform lives on one day on Saturday you know afternoon because we do these on Saturdays um, and have people walk away with a renewed sense of loving themselves and then being able to extend that love uh, to their sisters we have um, um, our jewelry collection the sister core you can see my bracelets <laughs> sister core jewelry collection launched Macy's picked it up. Now we're talking to some, we're talking to some folks now. Other uh, stores that again is blowing my mind that they're saying we want to engage you. We love what you're doing, and we want to stores um, carrying uh, your line. And so I partnered with an amazing sister out of Dayton, Ohio, Lisa Atkinson from Lisa Robin Jewelry, and she designed my bracelets love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and selflessness are the charms and then we have the sister accord bracelet um, we had a big fundraiser at Macy's uh, here in Cincinnati um, we had we launched our sisterhood connections um, uh, event last year as well helping women understand how to dream walk as many of us have stopped dreaming so how do we make sure that our sisters are dreaming and, and then understanding how to put a plan of action in place to actually bring the dream to life because that's where people get stuck and so we spend a lot of time talking about that and helping women understand how to partner effectively because why recreate the the will why reinvent it if you can partner with someone and they have the skills that you don't have and vice versa um, <clears throat> we have a sister accord song which I'm really really excited about my sister my friend collaboration that will be coming out later this year uh, 51 ways to love your children is the next book that will will come out um, and so we want to have a conversation around loving our children and helping make sure that they are the best that they can absolutely be and have healthy relationships with each other and then we're going to launch our Sister Accord Leadership Enrichment Councils um, at some schools and universities this year. So many of my folks who uh, have attended the tea parties and events say, we need more, we want more. And so now we will have these uh, councils at, uh, at universities and schools across the country. So we've been busy. <laughs> yes, very busy, very yeah. busy. Yeah. That is, it's just amazing. And I mean, do you see now that you couldn't have done all this if you were still working your day job? Uh, there is no way, <laughs> no way whatsoever that I could have done any of this. And so, you know, I feel like the movement would, you know, whatever God has in store is going to happen. But I felt, I feel like if I had stayed, we would not be anywhere 
uh, you know, close to where we are now with taking the movement to another level. Yes. Yeah. Definitely, you needed to um, give focus. full time attention to it. Yeah, focus. <laughs> exactly. <I> mean. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But the, um, I want to say because I have the book and I read the book and it's excellent. I highly suggest people go get it. If you uh -huh. know any women in your life, it is a really good book and it has some really cute stories. Of course, <laughs> most people know I have a younger sister and so yeah. me and my sister are extremely tight. Yeah. And, um, oh, and actually, the second book I received, I ended up giving to her for Christmas. So oh, she has yeah. one too That's now. Right. That's yeah. right. That's so, uh, so she That's has. Right. And I love the sisters, and I, the, one of the very first sisters in here, group of two sisters, was Tatiana Lee and her sister. So I really like that because we, you know, of course, watched The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and everything. Yes. But, but yeah, yes. it's really, really good, and um, it's so important. I've mentored a lot of high schoolers, and I'm a yes. Girl Scout leader. I have little yes. five- and six-year-olds, though. It's, at five and six, they're much better than clearly the high schoolers. But, you know, the <laughs> high schoolers... I'm just like, you know, why did you call her that? And why did you? And then, you know, now girls fight. And I, I wasn't yes. one of those people. So I'm like, yes. um, why did you hit somebody? What was exactly. it? You know, I just don't understand. Exactly. So it's something that's much needed. I mean, much yeah. needed. And then yeah. even, um, I'm sure you saw uh, last year, um, Oprah had that whole special. And Gabrielle Union talked about how A.J. Johnson yes. spoke to her about being a mean girl. Yes. And, you know. Yeah. It's, you know, unfortunately, you know, she's 40-something years old, but, you know, yes. clearly she needed somebody to bring her back down, you know, to exactly. earth. Exactly, exactly. We all, we all need it. We all yeah. need it. And we have to unravel because we have been socialized to believe that we have to take each other out, um, even the best of us, right? right? <clears throat> I got to take her out. You know, and I love to compete. So I always tell people, let's get something real clear. I like to win. <laughs> you and me so both. this is not about losing or being, you know, a wallflower. This is about focusing on being the best version of yourself so that you can be excellent and excel at whatever it is you want to do. Okay? If you're focused on doing that. But you don't try to take other people out in order to elevate yourself. And that's what's really very important about the principles of the sister court because I, I'm a beast when it comes to vi business and, and winning. I mean, you know, I, I'm in there. I'm right. very competitive. Um, but I never, ever felt like I needed to take someone else out. And I always, and I told the people when I first got to Ford Motor Company, because I came from FAMU, and at FAMU we took care of each other. So I'm like looking around, I'm like, why don't people help each other here? And my girlfriend said, hey, it's every man and woman for themselves. And I said, look, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to show that there's a different kind of leadership style. I did not see the leadership style that I wanted to emulate when I went to Ford Motor Company because that was a very tough environment, mostly male-dominated, and uh, they would cut you. <laughs> I mean, they just did not mess around. Very straightforward, very tough environment, and if you couldn't hang, it was not a pretty picture. And so, um, you know, I, I just said, you know, there's something here that I want to show that you can get amazing results and still be a compassionate leader. And so I developed my own leadership style as a result of that. Well, and I, I hope they still, you know, keep it up because I do have a lot of friends that are engineers at the big three, and it is very, very male dominated, and you know, mm -hmm. it's it's difficult. But we can all. And my whole thing is, it's awfully lonely at the top. <laughs> so why wouldn't you want somebody else up there with you? Why would you knock them down to get up there? Well, that's why I say, you know, it shouldn't be lonely at the top. Exactly. You are, you got to bring somebody, you know, bring them along with you. And a lot of times, a lot of us are excited about being the only one. That's, yeah. There's no fun in that. There's no. nothing exciting about that. Make sure that you're creating a pipeline of folks that you can bring along with you. And that's what I've tried to do. I want somebody who can replace me. Mm -hmm. You know, I never wanted, I never, you know, felt like, you know, I needed to kind of guard my positions. I was looking for who's the next Sonya so that I can go do what I need to do. Right. And that's what it was all about for me. Anyone who wants to ask questions, if you're watching via Google+, 
you can click on the white squares that are in the upper right hand corner and it'll say Q&A and then a column will drop down on the side of your screen and just hit ask a question, type in your question. You can also tweet questions and I should be able to see them. Hashtag Ask Dr. Renee Show. Uh, you can tweet me at Ask Dr. Renee and I will try and find your question. <laughs> so so um, the Sister Accord, uh, so when is the song coming out? We are hoping to have that uh, out later uh, in the fall. Okay. Um, we are uh, in the throes. Uh, I, I gave people a little teaser. Um, yes. <laughs> we, had, we added the, oh my gosh, you should have been at that session at that studio in L.A. I mean, it's a big board where Thriller, I think they said Thriller was used. This is an amazing studio with a lot of history, so I wanted to be all up in that studio, you know, to have the kind of success um, that they had. Right. Um, but this is an amazing collaboration of, of uh, all women of all different um, music genres um, who will be singing on this uh, My Sister, My Friend collaboration. So we're looking at the fall to have everyone together and then uh, have this release. So we're really, really excited about it. That is really cool. There are I two ways that I've music. said that I'll be able to get my goal my goal is to have one billion girls and women live the principles of the sister accord and I said the music and technology will be the two ways and so we have a sister accord app um, that folks can download whether you have on the Android platform or the iPhone iOS um, so download the sister accord app and then uh, music so we really are very excited about this collaboration because we feel like um, it will take the, the movement to the next level as well. Now, did you ever imagine that you, this would be your life? Because I know some of the people that you've worked with just in the book, and then, <laughs> uh, you know, some of the people that you've worked with with the song. I mean, did you yes. ever imagine? Never. <laughs> if you had asked me, oh my gosh, and I should have brought the, I keep my journal next to my bed, and, um, one of my mentees, and this is how my mentees bless me so much. Um, you know, as a mentor, you know, I feel like, you know, being there for, for my mentees, and I have a mentee from every continent with the exception of Antarctica. Um, so very diverse, amazing people. But one of my mentees wrote me uh, a letter, I don't know, it's got to be five years ago. And she said she had been praying for me and she had all these things that God had told her, you know, to share. She was scared to share them with me because she's like, I don't know what all this means and I'm nervous. And I keep the letter next to, to my bed in my journal. And a lot, and I actually posted about it this evening, a lot of what she has said has come to pass. And when she gave me the letter, I was like, what is she talking about? I could not even wrap my mind around the stuff that she was talking about because I was focused on I'm this corporate executive this is what I'm supposed to be doing over here and God kept saying I'm going to stay on you until you understand what I created you to do is what I want you to focus on and you will not go one day hungry as a matter of fact, I will multiply the blessings, but I was scared out of my mind. And that's what we do. So she gives me this list of stuff, and I'm like, okay, Farrell, I, I don't know what this means, but I'm, I'm going to keep it. And, um, gee, when I tell you, nearly everything on that list has come to pass, and there's this one piece of what she said to me that I was totally blown away by. And it looks like, you know, I can't uh, announce it yet. I was hoping to be able to announce it tonight. But um, one piece of this puzzle uh, is going to happen this week that is going to, you know, really just blow my mind even more. And again, I come back to the fact that I never, ever anticipated, thought that this would be my life at this point. Never, ever thought about it. And they, they, you know, they say God, only God can bi dream a uh, bigger dream than you. Exactly, so. exactly. And what my, for, for me, my story is trust, trust and obey. 
and for so long I always tried to control everything it had to go my way it had to look like this we're Virgo. I didn't we plan. recognize it we plan things yeah. out to a T exactly 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 so I was letting all that Virgo stuff yep. that gets in the way um, get in the way and I finally got to a place where I and it feels so good I, Renee I cannot tell you just to release and say you know what God I have no idea what this means but I'm rolling with your plan and ever since I did that boy he really has uh, poured out the blessing I could be sitting thinking and writing in my journal and saying oh I would sure love a connection to so and so or that it would really be great to do so and so and someone will call me and say hey have you ever thought of so and so because I want to connect you and I'm like whoa wait a minute and those are the kinds of things that have happened that is funny but it I mean it's so true though like I, I've said several times uh, maybe about six seven years ago I woke up and decided I was gonna choose to be happy and yeah. I just have been rolling through that way ever since and yeah. because I've chosen to be happy it's exactly. like all the things that you know yeah. just odd things fall into place and yeah. you know I always wanted to be a doctor I grew up I said I wanted to be a doctor I wanted to help people I said yeah. I wanted to be like Dr. Nancy Snyderman on Good Morning yeah. America yeah. and you know and then I got a radio show and I'm like yeah. you know and my mother was like you're doing what? I was like I got a radio show <laughs> and then with this show I told somebody recently, I said, you know, I'm very good at convincing myself that things are a really bad idea. So I'll come up with this great idea, but I will say that is so perfect <laughs> and so silly. So I, I emailed five people about the show, and it didn't even have a title. And I told them, this is what I think I should do, blah, blah, blah. And they all said they would be on the show. I said, oh, shoot, now I wow. have to actually do a show. Right. I was like, that was my accountability. I was like, well, now I've said it and put it out there. I have to make good yes. on my promise. Yes. But yeah, and it's just funny. I was like, okay, we'll just, I was petrified. I was like, nobody's going to watch. Nobody's going to see it. And then I, I remember after the very first episode, I went to a function and this girl, she didn't even let me get my coat off. She pulled me aside and was like, <laughs> I just have to tell you that I was in the car, so I just listened to the first episode while I was driving, and I was crying. And I said, what? And I was just like, are you serious? Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. my God, keep doing yes. it. Oh, my God, you guys, it was just See? so inspiring, and you really motivated me. And, yeah. you know, I'm an entrepreneur, and yeah. just listening to her as an entrepreneur, just really, it was uh, my friend Elvira Guzman, and she's like, yes. it just really really let me know that I should keep doing what I'm doing and I'm, I'm on the right path and I was like well I'm so happy that it worked out for you and right. I just was stunned I told my sister and she goes I was gonna send you a message but I was praying you'd be at this party so I could tell you in person but I, wow. I listened and I'm telling everybody that they should watch and I was like really? Wow. <laughs> I but said, that's what it's all about. <laughs> exactly. I go, you, well, do what you do so well. You're so Thank amazing you. and you know, I just thank God that um, Miss Fletcher yes, uh, I know. That connected was so us. So funny. So I have to tell everyone. So of course, social media, everyone knows, is a huge part of my life. So yeah. I, of course, went on Facebook and said that I'm at Essence, which I'm at Essence most years. And I was speaking last year, so I posted it. And one of my friends from high school, <laughs> we were in Alpha Kappa Alpha Teens in Southfield yes. Chapter in high school. She puts a message. Oh, Sonia, Sonia, you should meet Dr. Renee. And I'm like, yes. Who is so, I mean, it was difficult, but we finally got it together we after she out. left the center stage at the convention center. I go, who is this woman? She's on the center stage. <laughs> <laughs> My sister's like, who is she? I go, I don't know, Lish, but she said she's speaking at this time. So I went over to the conference center. I text my sister. I go, Alicia, she's on the center stage with Terrence J. <laughs> My sister's like, who is she? I don't know that. <laughs> so, and I, I'm, I have a bad habit. Like most people are like, you didn't Google the person? I don't right. do that. Like I just meet right. people and I get to know them. Right. I right. on Google and find out, right. but I really don't do that. So it didn't even occur right. to me. I was just standing yeah. there with my phone waiting for her. And I was like, well, I'll just say hello and we'll see what happens. And then lo and behold, I end up stuck in the airport all day. So I was like, oh, Sonia's here too. So yes. <laughs> we got to talk some more, and oh of course, like I said, 
Virgo, so we just clicked and you know. Yes, it has yeah. been a blessing to yeah. know you and you, you were too. such a blessing for me uh, when I was planning Sister Accord Day yeah. and just stepping in. I mean, you were like someone who had known me for years and you were like, <laughs> I got to help you, I got to help you and you were in there and I just, I'm just really honored by, you know, who you are and what you do. I mean, because you were working like I, I was like, crazy. okay, well, that one didn't work. Let me try this one. That one didn't work. Let me try that one. It was such a blessing I was to have you hold my hand okay, on something that you was so else? amazing. <laughs> yeah, but I'm glad it turned out well. I'm still sorry I couldn't be there, but I really needed to be home for my birthday. so I, was I know. So, yeah. <laughs> No, it was. It was really an amazing day. Mario and MC yeah. Light were there, uh, you know, to make it very special. We had over yeah. a thousand. You know, we thought maybe we'd get 500 people. It was over right. a thousand people. The square just filled to capacity. So it was really, really exciting. I can't thank wait you again for, you to come for that. To oh, you're welcome. I can't wait for you to come to Chicago. It's going to be amazing. Amazing. Oh yes, yeah, well, because there's so many women awesome here that party. yeah, there's so many women here that I know yes. that will definitely you know appreciate oh, it yes. and um yeah oh, so yes. I can't wait. But um yeah yeah how can, oh, let yes. me there's a few questions that we do with every guest that I want to make sure I do with you as well. So what is a day in the life of Sonia Jackson? Uh -huh. Miles? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Now okay. I can. What is a day in the life of Sonia Jackson Miles? A day? Mm-hmm. You said a day. What's a day like for me? Day in the me? life. Yep. Oh, yep. wow. Well, I'm still traveling like crazy. You know, so between the tea parties and um, meetings that I have, and I have another side of my business where I do consulting for businesses and celebrities and brands and uh, a lot of um, brand work um, and so that keeps me traveling uh, quite a bit um, so mostly I am traveling I am on meetings from sun up to sundown um, particularly I have a lot of people that I work with they're in California so you know while it's still early there I find myself up really late um, on this end, um, I try to take my son to school as often as I can, um, having that time with him, um, being silly and crazy and having a great time and making sure that he has a day, uh, that at the beginning of his day is uh, it's pleasant. Um, I try to do that as often as I can and so I'll take him to school and then it is so refreshing. I cannot even tell you, and I think I may have posted this once, but when the boys, when I left um, corporate America, you know, being able to see them onto the bus or off of the bus, you know, was just not something that I got a chance to do regularly. So here I am, they're in high school and I'm waving and I'm standing there and I'm so excited. <laughs> And they're like, lady, will you just get back in the car? I'm like blowing kisses and I'm jumping up and down. Oh, my God. But I was just, it's the little things. It's those simple things that um, I didn't have an opportunity to do, you know, for 20 years. Because I was, you know, doing all this uh, stuff in, in corporate America. And so it it was just really an awesome opportunity for me to um, stay connected to the family give my husband the time that he needed as well um, and so that's what my my day is you know I try to then take meetings after Jordan you know goes to bed because mm -hmm. Kendall's off in college now we have a question yes. I love this interview and I cannot wait to hear your exciting news this week my question is, how difficult is it to balance with all that you do considering you're a wife and mother? It is crazy. It is crazy, crazy, crazy. You know, I would never lie to anyone. But I'm in control now 
I set my schedule now uh, and that gives me a bit more flexibility than I had when I was uh, in corporate America so I absolutely love the fact that I can be a bit more flexible I can take meetings at a certain time to make sure that I can help with homework helping with homework and and quizzing Jordan and making sure that he understands the concepts and he's really a uh, creative kind of artsy person just like Kendall is and they both want to do film and you know so helping them you know think through the structure of their stories and creating characters and things that they want to do I now have that opportunity because then I can take my meetings later in the day and so now I feel a great sense of balance that I didn't quite have pre uh, previously because now I just have a bit more flexibility so that's what I really love about uh, being an entrepreneur I, I cannot lie there are days that I, I wake up and I say hmm Lord I'm not so sure is this really what you wanted me to do <laughs> you know I I put a video out and I'm talking about helping girls and women love each other it might get four views you know, somebody else puts a video out and they're showing their bottoms and they get four million views in, you know, in an hour. And I'm like, that's my competition. So is this really what you want me to do? Uh, but at the end of the day, I know exactly that I'm doing exactly what I should be doing. And I know that there are girls and women out there who absolutely need to hear this message. And I'm dedicated to making sure that I get to my one billion. And we, you'll get there. I'm, I'm yes. sure of it. <clears throat> now, what is your definition With of your success? Help, I'm there, sister. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> what is your definition of success? Well, uh, it's changed over time. You know, I'll be very honest. Back in the day, it was VP before 40. Right. Right? Uh, because that's what I was trained. You know, my mentor who started the School of Business and Industry, Dr. Sybil C. Mobley, had this dream. You know, she was a secretary, went back and had children and went back and got her PhD and we went to Wharton. I mean, this lady is amazing. But she had this dream that she would create these executives, these African American young people who would go and run companies. And she drilled in our heads what we needed to be focused on, and we bought it. <laughs> and so I was, like I said, I was very career oriented. It was, that was it. That was my definition of success to the point where, you know, I said I was pregnant with my third child and should have been excited, and I wasn't. So my success, had, my, my, my definition for success has evolved over time. You know, just being a great person, a great mother, a great wife, um, you know, a great daughter, and doing the things that I know God has purposed my life to do. Um, now I feel like those are the, the keys to success, whereas before it was caught up in, you know, the title and the money, and I had to get to a place where... <laughs> Uh, that was no longer uh, important in driving my decisions. So what's the best piece of advice you ever received? Um, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. Because what it allowed me to do, because it's Virgos, and I think you know, you know this about yourself too, we can tend to be perfectionists. Bingo. And so for me, it was like, oh, it's got to be perfect. It's got to look like this before I do it. And one of my mentors said, no, don't be afraid to fail. Just do it. Just get it. Fail, fail fast and move on. Move on um, to the next And so yep. that allowed me to be much you know, more free in the things that I would engage in because I was no longer afraid. Um, but I had to, you know, really focus on uh, getting over the things that were holding me back and being uh, afraid of, of, of certain things. I had some fears that I had to conquer. Once I did that, I was able to get to a place where I could understand that it, it didn't, just because I failed, didn't mean that I was the failure. 
Exactly. And many people, most people, you know, I'm sure you've heard the story about Michael Jordan and how many times he failed oh. before he, you know, exactly. Yes. So yes. lots of people fail and, yes. you know, and look That's where right. they are now. That's right. Know. That's right. Do you have a favorite right. quote or scripture? My favorite uh, scripture, I have many favorite scriptures, but the one that I, oh, I wake up every morning and... And I say, well, I have one that I tell my sons every morning. Um, but the one that I tell myself every morning is eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the mind cannot conceive what God has in store for those who love him. And that's 1 Corinthians 2.9. And then I always ask the boys every morning, you know, um, what's your scripture? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What's left out of all? Nothing. So that's our little thing that we do every morning. But that's my favorite scripture. Philippians 4.13 was my signature in my emails for years. No, really? And so when I, yes, because Oprah had actually said that was her favorite scripture. And then after that, somewhere around oh. then, that was my, became my, my signature. And so the first oh. time I met Oprah, I told her that. And she oh said, yes, gosh. that's one of my favorites, but you should also look at Psalms 37.4. <laughs> Delight thyself in the Lord, and he's give you all the desires Ooh. of your heart. And she said I all, you it. know, and she named what all was. And <clears throat> so that's been, you know, that's my new, like, thing now. I every love time it. I hear it, I see it, I think <laughs> of her because that's what she told me. Oh, Personally, yeah. she told me. So I am so excited for you that you got because you know that is my dream <laughs> is to sit at the feet of Oprah. <laughs> so I'm just so excited to live through yeah. your experience with her. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but I'm sure we will all. You know, I I still say we're, I'm gonna be I'll be Gail's friend and I'll be Oprah's friend and we'll just you know it'll be lovely and all my friends and we'll have a lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> so they're the epitome of the sister of course so I gotta get the they book. are they are yeah. you do yeah, yeah definitely definitely yeah. they are quite the epitome they yes. are the truest best friends the best definition I had a wonderful sister accord um, like a sister accord moment this weekend one of my girlfriends we met in ninth grade wow. we were roommates at Michigan State she hmm. came this week she came this weekend because her middle child turned five on the 12th and decided she wanted to go have a party at a museum and she wanted to come to Chicago and spend it with Auntie Nene. Oh, so we how spent nice is she that? has three kids. We spent all day yesterday, her and her oh. husband and me, at the museum. And then the two older girls spent the night with me last night, which is why oh, I probably wow. was a little sleepy today because <laughs> it was a long night. But they were angels. We had a great time. They just don't like to go to bed. Exactly. That's how kids are, just in case right. you didn't know. The older one, she's all about, she'll, she'll go to sleep. It was the five-year-old that swore she was staying up, staying up, and then she finally passed out. We were like, thank you. Oh, my <laughs> so, gosh. So, and they had to leave amazing. early this morning, so I didn't get much sleep. It's been a long day. Oh. But so let's say you'll, you'll get a nap that. in later. Yeah, exactly. But they, um, she is the bestest friend in the, on the planet. She allows me to, you know, these are, I swear those are my children, you know, I am, yeah. you know, we are right there, I'm yes. like, okay, what are we doing, you know, I've been to the birthday parties, I'm, you know, yes. right there, so I'm very excited, we had a great time, and she said this was better so than nice. any party, because she didn't oh. have a party, she had this, wow. so she said this was better than a party. So that's said, what it's well, all about. Yeah. So we we did makeup, we made cookies, we made pizza, we watched Annie twice and Mary Poppins. And she'll never forget and that's it. And that's exactly one of my fifty one ways. That's one of my fifty one ways to love your children. And when you surround yourself with uh, and your children with amazing people as part of that extended family, yeah. you know, it's amazing what happens. So that's really, really important stuff what you're talking about there. Yeah. So we we had a great time and Salam is just the best and we that I mean she is my ride or die. I broke my toes Aww. at Michigan State and we were roommates. So she wow. knew I was in immense pain. She put me in my car and drove mm -hmm. me and I mean she drove crazy but she knew I was dying. <laughs> I mean I don't do pain well and I was dying. <laughs> I was in so much pain. And she got me to that hospital 
she knew all my information to tell them because I couldn't talk. I was in so much pain. Wow. She told them, you know, my parents' name, the phone number. Oh, yes. Parents' name, phone number. Her insurance card is here. She had it. Called that my parents, told them what happened. He, oh, yeah. She is definitely. I mean, my sister and I, you know, we are thick as thieves. But yeah. Salam is our other sister, and she knows it. That's yeah. so nice. Yeah. So, so nice. Yeah, so I, I just, I love sisterly everything. And uh, mm -hmm. now the two sisters I had last night, they're, we're going to get them to be very sisterly, but I think it's just the age difference right now. Yes. Eight just and five, we but we're going to get them. Early. we got to yes. plant those seeds. Yes, they, they watch me and my sister, and Salam's always, look, see how Renee and Alicia are? So they, <laughs> they and I mean, the little one, of course, adores the big sister. The big sister, oh, yeah. she's, we're working on her. She's going to, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> if he throws it a million times, I'm like, it's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. And then Elsa could do it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but um, these are some really quick flash, whatever comes to your mind. First thing comes to your mind question. Finish these sentences. The world needs love. I believe in God. Love is everything. Branding is everything <laughs> and my job is to touch one billion girls and women with the message of love respect and support yeah and please let everyone know how they can reach you how they can purchase the jewelry and the book 51 ways to love your sister Yes, so um, the sisteraccord.com, you can buy everything there. Um, I am on Twitter, the sister accord, Instagram, the sister accord, um, Facebook, the sister accord page, Pinterest, YouTube channel, the sister phone. and the world amazing message of love join the movement be part of the one billion thank you Sonia for sharing your story with us this evening thank you everyone for watching and asking questions this show is here to motivate and inspire you to live the life you deserve and you can start right now and it does not take much you yes. can start right now with an idea uh, Sonia, what we didn't talk about was she yeah. does these dream walkers talks, which actually I would love to sit in on one. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and she gets you, you know, gets you to realize your dreams. And so please make sure you follow her, reach yeah. out to her. As she said, she speaks. She'll fly yeah. to where you are and speak wherever. And um, you'll be blessed, trust and yeah. believe. So I want to remind everyone. Uh -huh. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to remind everyone you can receive all of my shows via podcast on iTunes. Search Ask Dr. Renee. They are free. And so if you need to hear something again, uh, catch a quote we said, um, just listen to them while you're driving or working out or whatever. And, of course, you can reach me on all social media platforms at Ask Dr. Renee. I never talk about it, but actually I write for several online publications. If you would like to read some of the yes. stuff that I talk about, it's um, everything I talk about usually is health, but I'm in blackdoctor.org. I'm on Madame Noir and uh, Black and Married with Kids. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, tweet me. I get questions all the time. And I would so appreciate it. Um, please support both of us. Like our pages. Follow us on Twitter. Yeah. Um, we usually follow yeah. back. Just, you know, support yeah. us, please, because we are trying to, you know, do yeah. something here and uplift everyone. So thank you so yeah. much, everyone. If I've motivated yeah. anyone, then I've done my job. And please, if you have anybody with a story that you think yeah. inspires you, let me know, and perhaps they can end up on the show. Now, we have a special show this Thursday. We are going to have Dr. Rovinia Brock, known as Dr. Ro. Um, she's been on the Meredith Vieira show several times this season, but she's from the Dr. Oz show. She had a show many years ago called Heart and Soul on BT, mm -hmm. but she is America's nutrition coach. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll get some nutrition information as well as hear her amazing story, because she has quite a story as well. She uh, also went to an HBCU. She went to Howard. 
And so, <laughs> and then next Sunday, we will have Tanisha Jackson Warner, who has a phenomenal story about coming from Alabama and ending up in New York City working with Russell Simmons. So um, I hope yeah. that you will watch. And yeah. we have some really, really, really big ones coming in April. And so please stay tuned. And I so appreciate everyone. Have a good evening. And we will see you on Thursday. Thursday's show will be at noon uh, Central Time, so 1 o'clock Eastern Time. And uh, please bring your questions because that's what she's there for. She is a nutrition coach. Good night. <laughs>